So high blood pressure is known as the silent killer because most of the time you won't realize that you've got high blood pressure. Uh, the only reason I discovered I had high blood pressure was because I had heat stroke and it sent my blood pressure through the roof. Got tested and my blood pressure was super, super high. So I obviously had it for a while and discovered it with the heat stroke and the heat stroke just accentuated the problem a little bit. So there's a lot of natural ways you can keep your blood pressure low. And the two most important things that you need to consider is your diet and exercise both equally important maybe your diet a little bit more so because limiting your sodium is one of your main goals when you've got high blood pressure you can't be having any added salt so processed foods fast foods even when you're cooking at home you'll be surprised if you're using tinned ingredients or you're using ready-made sauces or packaged foods you'll be surprised at how much salt there is in all the items so the maximum that you should be getting the Heart Association says 2,300 milligrams of sodium, which sounds like a lot when you think about it, but it's only 2.3 grams, which is half a teaspoon. When you look at some tinned vegetables and sauces, sometimes it can have 2.5 grams of salt in just one item. So if you're eating through the day and you're getting fast food, you're getting Big Macs. A Big Mac can contain a thousand milligrams of salt without the fries. So there's a lot of things to consider and a lot of ways you can cut out your sodium. So limit fast food or cut fast food out completely. You don't want to have any processed foods, no cold meats, salamis, any of that. Pickled items are also a problem because pickled juice is uh, high in salt. So you have to learn to read labels. Now, I was even shocked because I've never looked at a label for salt. You always check for like sugars and fats. So you must also be careful of things that you might think are healthy, like light foods. Sometimes they are not as healthy. So you can look at the regular and it might have a certain amount of salt and you'll look at the light or the diet version. And sometimes more often than not, the diet version has way more salt and way more sugar than the normal item. So you really, really got to pay attention. Just remember 2,300 milligrams of salt per day. When you're reading your food labels, you'll see that it's got two, two sections to the table. The one is per 100 grams, and the other section is per serving, which is probably like 25 grams, or it will show you the entire content. Doesn't always show you the entire content, so you've got to be careful. You've got to look at what, how much salt is per 100 grams, because if you're having more than 100 grams obviously you're gonna to have to double it or triple it whatever the amount you're having so limiting sodium reading food labels is crucial the next thing you want to look at is getting enough fruits and vegetables into your diet not eating too much red meat because red meat has a lot of fat in it a lot of saturated fat which clogs your arteries and obviously increases your blood pressure so really really pay attention to what you're eating I've changed my diet for about a month now. I think it's exactly four weeks. I've lost five kilos. I'm feeling a lot more energetic. My blood pressure has dropped dramatically. It's still slightly high, but I think by the end of this month, I'll be okay. And that's just with diet and slowly getting into exercise. So it took me about two weeks to finally get back into boxing and um, lifting weights after my heat stroke. Uh, I've taken it very, very slowly. But now that I'm doing it, I can do a little bit more. We've got intense heat in Johannesburg right now. It's uh, 33 degrees today and there's a heat wave coming tomorrow. So I still feel like I'm struggling with the heat a little bit. But other than that, I'm boxing, I'm lifting weights. And that's what you need to do with uh, high blood pressure. You need to get at least 150 minutes of moderate exercise a week. So if you break that down, it's like half an hour every few days. It's not that much. Uh, and moderate meaning a brisk walk or a light jog nothing too strenuous just to get your fitness level up get you um, into the exercise routine uh, and lifting weights so I found that lifting weights gets my heart working a lot harder but I feel a lot better afterwards I feel like I'm, I'm really getting fitter just by, from lifting weights and then when I go to boxing I'm feeling a lot stronger so I alternate between um, boxing and weight lifting 
the boxing is high intensity cardio I, I sometimes take it a little bit easy and just do like four rounds or two minute rounds you got to find what you enjoy so if you enjoy jogging if you enjoy running or biking whatever it is hiking you got to find what you like because if you don't like what you're doing you're not going to stick to it also with diet um, you can't I've been eating a lot of fish and salad and then sometimes it gets boring and you don't really want to eat that anymore so what I do is I've got a low sodium wrap it's bran and seed wrap it doesn't sound so nice but it's actually not too bad you put that in the pan you just warm it up I cut my salad I cut my cucumber and tomatoes really really fine lay it down I make my own vinaigrette so I use a whole grain mustard don't use too much mustard because it's also high in sodium if you can find a low sodium mustard and then put apple cider vinegar with that and then you've got your own vinaigrette which is really really nice you can just drizzle that over the salad and then you can put your fish or your chicken into the wrap roll it up and then what I do because that's still a bit boring for me I love hot sauces so I either put a low sodium hot sauce or I cut up fresh chilies mix it with some olive oil very little crush it up and then I've got my own homemade hot sauce so there's a lot of different ways you can turn food that might seem boring or too healthy for you if you're just eating fast food and it feels like it's a huge change you can adapt and whatever you used to if you make pizza or if you make burgers uh, I've cut out bread completely because bread is also quite high in sodium you don't even realize it rye bread is even more than white bread so you've got to check whole grain breads and and check the labels on the breads as well because bread two slices of bread can come up to 350 milligrams of salt so if you have four slices in a day you're already halfway uh, if you're adding something onto the bread you're already halfway of your 2300 milligrams so just take it really really easy with salt um, cut out everything that you can eat as much fresh veggies fruits legumes beans nuts and just make it exciting it sounds boring but I'm enjoying eating the way I'm eating right now I haven't had any fast food I don't crave any fast food sometimes you think about a burger and then at the end of it I have a tuna salad or something and I feel great and I don't have that craving anymore if you're craving crisps because I was eating a lot of crisps as well uh, I've got I found these beetroot and sweet potato crisps that are baked they've got no added salt so that's just like a light snack I've also been having sliced carrots with a tiny bit of hummus you can just dip the carrot in and that's a snack it's quite nice just limit the hummus because it's also quite salty so you've got to just check uh, with cheeses stay away from cheese the only cheese that I've been eating is ricotta because there's no added salt there's not much flavor but if you're having a salad and you've got ricotta and it's mixed in with that light vinaigrette it tastes a lot like feta even though you don't taste the actual cheese the vinaigrette just adds something and it, it tricks your mind into thinking you've got feta on there feta is also very salty so stay away from it just simple little things and tips and tricks of changes in your diet and just slow exercise if you can just do some gardening or go out for a walk or go on a hike and just take it very slowly you'll see your blood pressure is going to drop significantly you're going to feel a lot better and what I found is that I sleep a lot better as well because with high blood pressure you have insomnia because your your arteries and your veins are so tight you're not relaxing fully um, your body's fighting and struggling your heart's working harder so when you're laying in bed you might feel agitated you might feel like you're having a bad night so if you're struggling to sleep check your blood pressure it might not be that you have insomnia and you need a sleeping tablet it might be that you've got high blood pressure and your body's fighting and tell, trying to tell you something I hope this helps you because there's a lot of information out there and it can become too much eventually so I thought I'd just make a simple video hopefully it helps you you can use some of my tips and tricks on changing your diet and having nice things for dinner stick to fish and chicken and salads and veggies and you'll be fine lots of fruits I'm eating lots of blueberries blueberries are really good for, for blood pressure papaya um, grapes um, having strawberries so I'll have that as breakfast with a little bit of low-fat plain yogurt mix it up in the blender have a smoothie add a little bit of honey so there's lots of things you can do you're not stuck to one thing and eating the same thing like you're on a diet you can just think of it as a healthy lifestyle change and you're eating better because after this month I'm feeling great I'm shopping a lot better a lot healthier making wiser choices at the grocery store so simple changes can make a huge huge impact in your life I can feel it and I've really struggled with this high blood pressure it's taken a long time I haven't started fully working yet it's taken a big toll on my body but now with my diet I can feel my body's coming into sync I'm feeling a lot more energized so I hope this helps you guys I'll see you guys soon